if you are watching this video is because you love Asian teapots, but do they really improve the quality of your tea? Let's experiment together to find it out. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. If you're new here in our channel and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. And if at any point of time you enjoy watching, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. All right, today we want to speak about brewing skills and we want actually to compare the taste of uh, the Asian teapot with the taste of uh, a porcelain guy one. We've done already quite a few videos about Asian teapot and I suggest to have a look at our teaware playlist where you find all of them, but we've never really done a comparison between an Asian teapot and uh, a guy one. And this is what we're going to do today. So, um, there is the common uh, belief or the common experience that Asian teapot tends to round up the taste of the tea. And also, for example, when we speak about roasted tea, they tend to reduce a little bit the roasting of overly roasted tea for a more harmonious and round uh, taste. This is because a glazed gaiwan and a glazed teapot has a neutral taste because it is glazed, it's like glass. Differently, the Asian clay is actually unglazed, so it is porous and affects the taste of the tea with its minerals. And uh, uh, you can see a teeth like, for example, stone, mud, because actually clay is nothing different than that, and stone and mud are actually not tasteless. They affect the quality of the tea and the taste. So let's see how. Um, I'm saying I'm going to do today a tea experiment and what I really suggest is not to simply stay there and look at the screen but go ahead and do the experiment together with me. You can watch the video and do it afterwards or you can just stop it from time to time and do this experiment with me at the same time because you might come up with different conclusions because your taste is different, your Asian teapots are different and also the tea you are using is different. Anyway, let's see everything you need for this experiment first. So we say, of course, you need an Asian teapot for the experiment, and I suggest actually to take two Asian teapots. By the way, if you have the opportunity of having two Asian teapots, then even better if you have a high quality one and a lower quality. In this case, I have here a very high quality clay, um, a very high quality Juni clay. This is a so so duanni. I'm actually not very sure about the quality, but I know it was very cheap. I know the way that these producers work, and uh, um, I would assume it is uh, the quality is not extremely high. I would be very surprised for the price actually that this was purchased. So, and of course, you need a guy one, uh, a porcelain guy one, or a glazed guy one anyway to compare it with. Then you need uh, some cups and you need some glazed cups. I have these small tiny cups here that I put here. Then you need uh, uh, some uh, glasses or pitchers. Important is that they are exactly the same and they are made of glass. Then you need uh, a strainer and uh, what's it, what else? You need uh, a scale to weight the tea. You need a timer if possible and you need also tea. I will show you a little bit later uh, how much tea and which tea because the first thing that actually we are going to do is to check the effect of uh, the Asian clay on the water because water is the main compound by far of tea. A cup of tea is mainly made of water and affects very much the taste. So we want to find out how does the Asian clay affect the taste of water. By the way, very important to say, in this experiment you want to be extremely precise. You want really to brew the three pots in exactly the same way because you really want only to taste out the difference in the clay and not the differences in the brewing method. All right, now let's go step by step and see everything you have to do. The first thing you want to do is to measure the capacity of the pot. You take just your scale, you take your pot, you put on the scale, you put water and you measure how much water fits in the, in the pot. I have done this already. I have here a pot that is 220 milliliters, Gaiwan 125, Ishin 190. 
you have to try to get a guy one that is more or less the same size as your Ishin teapot because this is another variable that can change the taste. Once you have measured the capacity, you boil your water. I have here next to me, so I start my kettle and you want really to bring the uh, water to a boiling, 200 degrees uh, centigrade. This is very important because for this experiment we don't want to go uh, to other temperature. Just in case the tea you will select is a green tea, then I would rather suggest to use 80 degrees for steeping the tea. But steeping the tea is the second portion, now we want only to brew water. Okay, here we go, is uh, at uh, 100 degrees. So um, what I do, I start my timer, here we go. And when I start my timer, I just simply, no, well, sorry, before starting the timer, we want actually to warm up the pots. I almost forgot. So what you want to do is you just put some water, don't have to be completely full, just put some water in one, water in the other and so on, just to warm up the material because they have different materials. So um, if you pour 100 degrees water in the pots, uh, depending on how thick and which type of material you have, actually the water will cool down and your brewing will uh, be at a different temperature. So, once the pots uh, are hot, you just pour the water back in, uh, in your kettle and uh, um, you bring it back to the boiling. And they say this is uh, of course uh, of relatively importance uh, when uh, we brew only the water, but it will be extremely important when later on we will be brewing uh, uh, the tea. Because certainly the tea would taste different if it's, brewing, uh, is, if it's uh, steeping at a different temperature. Okay, that's very hot. Here we go. So I will now boil again quickly the temperature. Is at 92 degrees, so just a little bit to bring it back to 100 and then we uh, really get started with the experiment. And uh, as I say, the only thing that we will uh, be doing is just steeping, uh, steeping water. So I wait a second and then I will be back with you with 100 degrees water. All right, the water is 100 degrees and now I'm ready, I start my timer and I pour water in the first teapot. I will take care of uh, having exactly the same interval between each pot, so I wait exactly 15 seconds from the start and then I pour in the second one. Not such an issue when we steep only water, but we want to practice for later on when we steep tea. And then I wait another 15 seconds and I put water in the last teapot. Here we go. At this point we let water steeping for five minutes. After five minutes it's time to pour out the water in each glass and you want to separate more or less by 15 seconds. As I said, full water is not a big issue, but later on what we will do when we will steep tea will be a difference. Here we go. And the Duanni. And this Duanni actually, um, I, uh, I purchased it uh, last year, actually it's, it's not mine, but uh, Caroline's and he, she purchased it last year from uh, a previous uh, supplier of us. Actually, we were buying a teapot by the mother of, uh, of uh, this uh, lady. And then the, the mother uh, that uh, was a niching, uh, is a niching artist, she retired and uh, uh, the daughter continued the business. And um, she changed completely the business. Basically, she she started together with uh, her husband and other young friends to run an online uh, shop in China and selling a lot of teapots every day, um, all made uh, by mold and uh, um, I would say a little bit of dubious quality just because of the large quantity that they are dealing with. Of course, cheaper price and that's why Karen bought a few items from them because are not too bad actually for the price but uh, uh, this for me was uh, the decision point where I stopped supply uh, teapots from, uh, from this family. 
and uh, we sold in the past people from her mom and now they are all sold out so you, we d you don't find any more tipos from this family on our website as you have seen I poured the water in uh, uh, in the cups and now it's just uh, uh, time for drinking I've already done this experiment before but uh, uh, if you do it for the first time and you have a second person you want to uh, drink blind you want to close your eyes and have someone else giving you uh, the cups so that you don't know exactly what you're drinking. This is really important to make sure that you taste the difference. As I say, I've done it yesterday when I tried this experiment and today I'm alone, so I will do it just by myself like this. Um, yes, I start with this one. You see that I could tend to close my eyes still when I drink because I can concentrate more on the taste. Then I will go to the other issue. And now is the time for the guy one. Okay, so what is interesting is actually the difference between the two Ishin teapot is very minor. Uh, the water is uh, relatively round and smooth in the mouth. It has a little bit of a bad taste, but just because this tap water is really bad water. In the guy one, uh, you have uh, a slightly different sensation. It's not as smooth in the mouth, but what uh, disturbs me most is that uh, there is a kind of taste um, of chlorine that reminds me when uh, I go swimming in the swim pool uh, and sometimes you drink the water from the swim pool and uh, uh, it has an off taste that reminds me also um, of uh, dishwashing liquid. So uh, as I said, these characteristics are present in all the three pots but I find that the two Ishing tend to round a bit more. As far as regards the comparison between the two Ishing is a little bit hard. Today my feeling was that uh, this teapot was a tiny bit better but I have to admit that yesterday when I did exactly the same taste blind I actually was more looking at this one as uh, having uh, um, a more uh, round sensation in my mouth uh, so I would say they are most probably a uh, comparison Com you can compare most probably with each other now we get to the next point which is actually uh, steeping the tea in the pot I will empty this glass. Um, what I suggest you, if you have a little bit of more time than I have now, is to let the water cool down a little bit and then taste again when the water is cool and see what feeling you get there. So now I'm just emptying those. We say about uh, the, the tea. I suggest using um, a light tea. Okay. I know that uh, um, Asian teapot are mostly used also to round, you know. Uh, round down uh, a strong taste like uh, the roasting and so on but if we really want to find out also more the effect on the water I suggest using a light tea I have chosen a white tea from 2012 out of a pressed cake also a green tea is okay but if you go for a green tea you want I just restart my kettle you want to uh, reduce the temperature to 80 uh, degrees centigrade all right, so what you have to do, I already put actually the leaves uh, in this uh, tiny container here, one for the Ishin teapot, one for the guy one, and one for uh, the other Ishin teapot. And uh, what you want to, um, to do is uh, to use exactly the same amount of water per capacity. So you want to use two grams of tea for 100 milliliter of water. This means this is a 220 milliliter. I've put 4.4 grams here, already weighted. For this one, 125 milliliters, it is 2.5 grams less. And this is 3.8 grams because it's 190 milliliter. Whatever it is, whichever pot you have, you measure them, you use your scale, and then you measure the right amount. 
Now, now you want to warm up again your pot. This is extremely important now because really these pots uh, requires much more heat to warm up. So if you put just 100 degrees water at first, uh, the water will cool down a lot. So I just uh, warm up them again. And uh, uh, what I suggest to do at home is actually to warm up the, uh, to warm up the pot uh, uh, twice. So you warm up them a first time, then you reboil the water, you warm up again, so really 100% sure they are very, very hot. And at that point, uh, you uh, immediately do uh, start uh, your steeping. So what I'm doing now, I'm just warming it up uh, the pots and uh, I don't have enough uh, water in the kettle. So I will uh, warm up the pots, put more water, reboil it, and then I will be back with you. All right, the water is boiling. I rewarmed up uh, the teapot and I'm ready now to steep the tea. So what I do, I use a lotus that helps me to pour the leaves in the pot, like this. And here we say we have quite a large amount because the pot is relatively large. Here we go. That's easy. And now we have uh, the duanne. It is a fairly dark duanni and it's also a saison duanni because it has the small spot. Um, these type of very dark duanni are still uh, uh, authentic, so it's normal to have really dark color, although the light yellow duanni are a little bit more common. All right, we said water, in this, this case, I will steep the um, tea only for three minutes. Have my timer started and here we go. I take care to feel it really right to the point so that is really the amount of uh, water that I have measured before. Same for the guy one just under the lid. Perfect. And uh, you have to wait a little bit so we say we do 15 seconds 15 seconds but the pouring in the guy one is a bit faster so I have to wait a tiny bit and now we do this one here there we go so three minutes to go three two one go and as you see, I'm using now a strainer because I really want a pure pouring without uh, any particle of tea falling in my glass. It's fairly dark, the color. I've said it is uh, a eight years old uh, white tea, so it's uh, fairly aged. I get here that uh, the leaves are a little bit stuck, so it is a slow pouring. The pot is really hot, I can barely touch the lid. Well, I really want to take it all out, even though there is a piece of tea stuck uh, in the spout. Okay, here we go. And now I'm curious to see if my taste today is similar to the one yesterday. I look at the color. Let's see. This one here, the Yi Xing, is a uh, yeah, very nice amber color. This one here is a bit lighter, but it could be also because it's just less quantity. So yeah, it seems just a tiny bit lighter in color in the guy one. And the other Yi Xing teapot is fairly, fairly similar to the other one. So I do the same as I did before. Just a tiny bit in each uh, cup. And then we check if there is any difference in taste. Uh, and I think I will proceed with the same uh, direction as I did before. So I will start first with the Juni. it. 
there is a big difference even more than yesterday that's uh, interesting hmm. I will test again because now the taste of this uh, teapot is even affected by the one of the guy one so when I tasted the, the first one my feeling in the mouth was is a good tea like that bad taste of water is almost disappears like like the tea in itself uh, is uh, is doing miracle with this water actually because really bad water now when I I tasted the next the guy one the, the difference was clear I didn't have that kind of nice uh, feeling in my mouth it is a little bit more harsh I would say and then when I switch to the last one I still had a little bit of a bad uh, taste so what I do now I start with this and then I switch to the first ishing so that I can compare the two So the guy one is lighter indeed and uh, between the two uh, there is no major difference I have to say it's very hard um, I would put really them at the same level at this point um, yesterday I had the feeling that in the Duani the tea was a bit stronger and it disturbed me so I went for the Juni today I cannot tell but what I can tell that the guy one has a lighter um, sensation in the mouth and this means that the taste of the water is still appears emerge, emerges from the taste uh, of the tea itself uh, so um, it's still a bit disturbing are minor differences right we're not speaking about uh, huge differences but especially when you go to high quality tea you really don't want to even ruin a tiny bit your tea with uh, um, with the water and with uh, the teapots yeah uh, what is also I have to say is that the pot do not change completely the taste of the tea so uh, I know this tea anyway because I drank it in the past uh, I usually uh, drink it in a guy one and I it doesn't change it completely somehow maybe them yeah it could be that they are a little bit smoother at least i have to say they do quite some miracles with this water uh to to my perception and i have to say i am uh, one of those that are a bit skeptical when people uh, say that uh ishing uh, is really good for steeping tea you should only use ishing and so i use a lot the guy one so um, um yeah i said it's not uh, i'm not the, the kind of guy that really go always for ishing and the things that ishing are the best uh, the best brewing vessel not necessarily so i mostly use ishing for aesthetical purpose actually let's see the other way if i start now with these it has it's it's hard to describe but it's muddy it's uh it's not pure it's uh um i don't know it's it's even more clear now that the temperature is cooled down so i suggest doing so more intense more present Today I tend to like a little bit more this one, but I say this just a tiny bit. All right, one important aspect. If you do this experiment with green tea, go just for, um, for 80 degrees water. I did it yesterday with both, with this white tea and also with the green tea. And amazingly enough, I said I was testing blind, so I didn't know which cup was given to me. And yesterday when I tasted the green tea after it cooled down I choose the guy one as my favorite so you see that uh, is not such a black and white it is a little bit complex and difficult and uh, for some reason I cannot tell you why but just tell you what happened yesterday we brewed this also with the green tea and after the tea cooled down for me the best taste by a tiny bit but the best taste was in the guy one 
All right, with this final statement, I'm sure I've confused you, but this means that you have to do the experiment yourself at home. So go ahead and let us know in the comments below which is the, your favorite, which uh, tea you have used for doing the experiment and which differences you have uh, noticed. The more we are doing this experiment and sharing information and the more the tea, com the tea community will benefit from it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and go ahead subscribing our channel if you haven't done it yet and more video like this will come your way very soon. Thank you very much. Enjoy your tea moments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.